Hi, this is an introduction of a drawing method, 3D, called One Point Perspective. The concept is that things in reality get smaller the further away they go from you. You can see that as a good example here. The size of the corner of this building is that, when you're stood right beside it. And as it goes away in the distance, the height gets smaller as it goes further away. Again, you can see over that side all coming down. And it all goes down to one single point in the distance. And this point is called the vanishing point. The vanishing point is the position on this green line that you decide where to put that vanishing point. And this green line is known as your horizon line or your eye line. Now, in this case, I've chosen the horizon line to be right at the eye level of this person. And it gives a realistic idea and view and scale of this building. Because the person's eyes are there, that's the real size of the person, and you can see the real size of the building. So as the person's walking past all the windows, you can see they would be able to see into the windows, They'd be going down to the entrance, and that's the size as they get smaller, so the person has shrunk down. As they're going past the windows there, you would see the height of the person walking past. If the eye line was much higher, then it would be as though you could be up on a ladder or in an aeroplane, and you're looking down on an object a lot more. So it's important to decide what height this horizon line is going to be. Now, from there, you can see even all of the windows are going down towards the vanishing point, the bottom corner of the building, and that's just following all the real lines of the building, and it proves that everything goes to a single point. You can see even those windows all going to that one single vanishing point. If we take another example of a school corridor and we draw lines along the bottom of the skirtings, the bottom of the skirtings there, the top corner of the corridor, the top edge of these uh, panels that follow down the roof where the lighting is, all those, all those. You again, you can see even the top of the doors everything goes to one single vanishing point. This method only works with very blocky items. This time, where they all meet is the eye line. So if I was to draw that eye line or horizon line, whatever you prefer to call it, I prefer to call it the eye line because it's easier to imagine where you are viewing something from. Whereas the horizon can be something in the distance, um, but see, a lot of people find it easier to understand an eye line. So there's the pupil's eyes, there's the height of the person. As they go down the corridor, there's the height and the person gets smaller but they still stay the same height. So everything going towards a vanishing point. We've got an example here where if we put the vanishing point bang in the middle, then we will evenly see both sides of that building. If, however, here, I move the vanishing point away from the middle and more towards one side, it's like we're standing more to one side, so we will see more one, one side of the building more than another. This method here, you can see a railway track. And again, if those were all the sleepers, as they go further and further away, the distance gets smaller, they get closer and closer and closer until it becomes quite difficult to define them. Telegraph poles. There's the top of the telegraph pole and the bottom all going down to the vanishing point and the distance between them gets smaller and smaller and smaller. A row of houses all along one street. There's the corner of the house, the top of the roof, vanishing point, the eaves, vanishing point, the top of the windows, top of the door, the bottom of the house, the road, all going 
to your vanishing point. So what I'm going to do is we're going to practice drawing some very simple blocks. And what we're going to start with is a basic horizon line. In this case, we're going to put it in the middle, um, just above the middle of the page. Trying to keep it straight. And let's make that dot that I accidentally ended up having as a vanishing point. Now I'm going to use red pen for all the lines. Perhaps I should have done that line there um, in red as well. But we know that that's the eye line. And the rest is a vanishing point. So let's say we're going to draw a big block. And if that was our eyes and this big block was much taller, then we need a starting corner. So I'm going to take a starting corner, sketch it down. There we go. And this block, I'm going to make it like a rectangle. And sketch it down. So a little bit of it is below, a lot of it is above. If we take the lines to the vanishing point, all of the corners, there we go. At the moment, let's not do these corners. And um, we just decide we're going to make it like a tall tower. There's that. And there we go. Let's do one down here. Let's do it as a rectangle. Now the eye line is well above the object. So you're going to be looking down on this object a lot more. So... All corners over to the vanishing point. You're recreating this shape, but within these lines. So how far back is it going to go? I'm going to make it go that far back. So it's partly over there, then straight down, because that line comes straight down. There's our object. Let's do something a little bit more complicated. Let's do a shape like, let's go for that, that one there. So I'm going to say it looks like there, up, up, and a bit. So you've got your basic shape. Draw the corners to the vanishing point. As you get used to it, you don't need to take all your lines all of the way. So it speeds it up. That bit would be going behind there, so you wouldn't see it, so there's no point. That bit will take like so. Right. Choose a starting corner and it goes straight up. So here we're going to decide how far and how big is the object. It's better doing it closer than further away. So it goes straight up between that line and that line. From there to there, it goes straight across. From there to that line, it goes up at this angle. From there to there, it goes straight across. This back edge is exactly the same position. Uh, this object is the same width all the way across. So if I took that line and drew it lightly across, you would see that what we end up with is that and that. Darken that in. There we go. So you're starting to get an idea for how to do it. We could do it with something a bit more complicated. Let's um, do this here and give it two feet like so. So I'm going to do that one and here. Okay. Now then, let's 
going to get more complicated now. So go into the vanishing point. Like I said, you don't need to draw them all the way along. Go to each corner. That one you won't see. This one you will. Just work your way around to each corner. Now, again, we just got to decide how long this shape is, but you will notice that I decided this has got little sticky out feet. So what I'm going to do first of all is get the main block in first. So how far back do I want the block to go? I'm going to start with the top and decide it's going to go that far back. So if I, it goes between there to there. There we go. This line goes across. Then it comes down to that line. Then it goes across like that. Then it comes up and across again. Then it's going to come that point, come straight down. So, so does this point. And then across. Now's the time when we can add in those two feet. But this is the same width. So there it is across the other side. There's that little bit there. And we're going to make the two feet. One there. And there. And the other one. There. And there. And we need to bring it down that far. So it's just going to come down like so. If that had been further over, then you wouldn't see that edge. There we go. Another sheet finished. I tend not to do things above the vanishing point because things don't float in the sky. It just doesn't exist. But remember your idea here, if we added some windows onto this building, and let's say the windows are uh, narrow, big gap, 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 narrow. So very quickly, we can create, I'm going to do this freehand for speed, all of the windows and what they look like. Fill in all the windows. You could even fit in a whole row of these blocks, dead easy, by doing that to there. If I add in that corner to the vanishing point, and like that. There we go. If you look at this drawing, you can get an idea for how this technique was used by architects, etc., to show the insides of buildings. These are all sectional views of buildings to show you what it looked like when you cut or remove a wall, what it would look like inside. So you've got all of the floors, and there you go, everything going back to one vanishing point. 
This is realistic because it gives you the impression of the person stood at a certain height. And then looking at the upper floors, you know, stairs and so on, what looks like windows. Looking down into a building from above, so you've got the room layouts there and there. So, common technique. Another technique is to use it to show a room. And that's what I'm going to practice and show you now. We're going to do a kitchen. So what I'm going to do is start with the back wall of the kitchen. There's a rectangle in the middle of the room. Now it just so happens that dot is about the height I would want it to be. If that's the height of a room, you can imagine a doorway is up to there and a person is about that high. So there's your eye line. So if our eye line is going across about that height, so you imagine a person stood in this back wall of a house, how tall would it be? If that's the roof, that's the floor. I'd say about there. I'm going to keep the vanishing point on that big dot, it's just convenient. And let's create the walls of the kitchen now. So what to do is you don't need to draw all of the line, only if you only need to draw it from there. Now some of you might not see it, but it's already beginning to take shape. You have two side walls, a floor and a ceiling. Now you've just got to decide how deep are the walls going to be. So remember, if it's vertical, it's got to be vertical here. So let's uh, make it there to there. And once you've done one, you're just joining it up with the other corners. So remember, it's got to be parallel to that now. There's the roof. Going the same angle as there. If you don't get it perfect, it's not a big deal. See what I mean? If you don't get it perfect, it might be slightly out. That's not worth losing sleep over. So now what we want is the door height and the door in place. So let's say the door was going to be here. So how tall does the door come to the ceiling about there? I would say that's not bad. That's the top of the door. It goes down to the vanishing point. Where's the door going to be? I'm going to put the door in from there to about there. Now we want to get some units into the kitchen. So we use the floor of the kitchen and we're thinking, right, how far out do these units come? Is it, are the units going to come all the way around? Yes, why not? Where are we going to have windows and so on? So I'm going to make the units come out about that far. And then draw the end of one unit. How far up do the units come? Now normally they're about 900 millimetres, so that's, that looks about right. If you have your units too high, then they're not going to be worktops, are they? So you're going to want a unit slightly taller than it sticks out. And that looks about right to me. Take this down to the vanishing point until it touches the back wall. There's the back wall, we're going to take it all the way across. Now we want to get that bit, I'm going to use my red pen. Now if you're using pencil, draw your lines very lightly. And you can always rub them out when you get too many lines, but I'm going to show you a different technique later anyway. Now you want your units to come down so far, but you want there to be a worktop across the top there. So I'm going to say the worktop is about that deep. And remember, the worktop also uses a vanishing point. So I'm going to say 
that deep. Yep. But it should be smaller. Because things get smaller when they go away in the distance, remember? So there's the corner. Let's bring that down. This across. Up to there. There we go. Now, what does a kitchen have? Sink, cooker, washing machine maybe, a fridge. I think there'd be about three units here. So if I divide this into three, so you got one, and then take that smaller size and divide it into two. Well, there's going to be drawers in some of these units. So I've got three units there. Let's say the washing machine is going to be there. Let's see, now that's going to, the worktop goes all the way along. So you don't need to take that to the vanishing point. Now it's just a case of dividing it all up. So let's say the sink is there and we're going to draw that to the vanishing point. So that's my sink. like that. There's always a double unit under a sink, usually, anyway. Also, I'm thinking, actually, the worktop has a thickness like that. Now, vanishing point, straight across. You'll end up with lots and lots of lines, but don't worry because I'll show you how to tidy it up once you think you've got things, most of the things in place. So there we go. I'm going to make that a oh, and you get something called a plinth in a kitchen, which goes at the bottom. Use the vanishing point. So if it's not straight up and down, then it goes to the vanishing point. Straight up and down, there's an angled line, it must go to a vanishing point. If it's angled, it goes to the vanishing point. Let's put a drawer, a door, set of doors there. And let's get a set of drawers here. I'm going to keep with that line, that'll be quite handy. Uh, two big ones and two small ones. Later on, I'm going to add handles and so on. Another double set of drawers. I'm going to put our cooker here. So the cooker halfway has a line because my cooker has a grill there like that. So I'm going to show it as a rectangle and then another rectangle down here. And then it's going to have a hob. So we want the hob to be a rectangle to the vanishing point, a wee bit there. It's an angled line, and then it's a horizontal line. I'm going to draw four circles. So it's like a hob. Above the cooker, there's usually a fan. Now this is getting quite fancy. So let's see if that's the edge of the cooker from there to there, then our fan is going to be between there and there. Let's see our fan, uh, the top of it is there, the bottom of it, and we're going to see it sticks out a uh, sort of a triangle shape. So like that. Bring that down to the vanishing point. Bring that line towards the vanishing point a little bit and that one. That angle there should be the same as here and then across like that to there. Let's 
let's put some tiles on there. So, looking good. Now, what do I want? I want a window. We tend to try and put the window beside where the sink is so that when you're all having to do the dishes and clean up, then you're going to do it at the window, looking out and seeing what chaos is happening outside. I'm going to draw a sink tap like that. There's usually a draining board that I'm just going to draw as little lines. Now what do we think we can have here? I'm going to say, uh, I'm not going to overly confuse Mars. I think that's okay as it is. You can add loads, you can even add little curtains But what you want to do, it's looking a bit messy just now So take your second sheet of paper Place it over the top And trace it so it looks good Then you can colour it in And you could even make photocopies And try different colour schemes for the walls You can add tiles to the floor um, dead easy to add tiles to the floor. Remember, everything just comes back from the vanishing point. 